Continuing with the 12-fold way, we're now going to do the case where we have identical balls and distinct boxes. So that's the case that we've depicted over here. We want to think about how these different cases play out. So we're doing row two, and as usual, we'll start with the unrestricted case. How does that go? So here, I've got all of these balls up here, and I'm going to put them into the boxes. Now, if I put a ball into box A, let's think about it this way. I put a ball into box A, and then I put a ball into box B. Well, that's actually the same as if I had first put a ball in box B, and then put a ball in box A, because I can't tell which ball goes there. I can only tell how many balls got put in there. So a better way to think of this case would be to think about how many times a box gets a ball. All that matters is how many balls per box. Okay, once we figured that out, now we're looking at the unrestricted case. What are we doing? Well, each box, so we have n choices, uh, one per ball, um, to pick a box with repetition. Because I can pick box A as many times as I like. So that means that I'm getting the, the multi-choice coefficient. K options, K boxes, choose N of them with repetition. Okay, what about, how does that change when we look at the injective case? Injective now says that once I pick a box, I can't pick it again. So really, it's just a question of which boxes have a ball and which don't. So for that, I just know that N of the boxes, so some boxes, boxes have one ball and the rest are empty. So what does that mean? That means I just need to choose which boxes get a ball. How many get a ball? Well, they're N in total. So they're K boxes. I choose N of them that will each get one ball. What about the surjective case? So for the surjective case, an easier way to think of it is I've got to make sure that every single box gets a ball. So why don't I just take the first K balls and chuck them into the boxes, one into each. And now what I have left, I'm free to do whatever I want with. So that's back to the unrestricted case. So first put one ball per box. And now how many balls do we have left? We have n minus k balls left. And now we're in the unrestricted case because you can put those however you want to do it. So we go to the unrestricted case. We still have k boxes. And now we have n minus k balls.